is cancer preventable? Glucose ketone index calculator and published this. This is the way to let people know whether or not they're in ketosis. So some people say, oh yeah, I, I eat a ketogenic diet. I said, what's your GKI? Well, I never measured. Well, how do you know you're in ketosis? <laughs> you have to have a blood measurement to know where you are, not what you think. So uh, the Keto Mojo meter, which is available through Amazon, uh, allows a lot of, well, we built it for the cancer folks uh, so that they can know how to kill their tumor cells uh, and also deliver drugs. When the, when the pan cancer patient is in ketosis, they, the drug delivery can kill the tumor cells much more effectively. Uh, the drugs take on tremendous power when the patient is in ketosis. Uh, even then you can cut all your chemotherapy drugs in half or even lower than that sometimes. It really has tremendous power. But the guys who are just in the society that want to stay healthy and think they're in nutritional ketosis, they can use the meter to see whether or not they're in that, in that state. Now, my good friend, Dom D'Agostino, is always in ketosis. Uh, Dom eats meat, yeah, eggs, uh, certain vegetables and things. Um, he's just eating more of a paleolithic life. And um, yeah, so, I mean, you have to think of our ancestors, our paleolithic ancestors uh, ate a lot of meat, uh, but the meat was organic. I mean, you're killing, you know how much energy it takes to run after a deer and kill it and then drag it back and cut it up and eat it. You've got to use a lot of energy on this. And then what are you eating? The organ meat, you're eating the flesh. Uh, there's not a lot of carbohydrates in this, um, but but you get a lot of energy. To this. So if if uh, a, a, now vegans, I understand they may have an adverse uh, whatever. But uh, if, if our our ancestors, if our ancestors were vegans, we you and I would not exist today on the planet. Thank you. Uh, we only know Dawn works really well because we have preclinical studies to show that it does, and it works a hell of a lot better on the metastatic kind of cell than it does on the stem cells. Not to say that it doesn't work on cancer stem cells, but you know we're building these cocktails all the time, diet drug cocktails. And as I said, the two fuels are glucose and glutamine. So the diet drug cocktail is designed to keep the rest of the cells healthy while you strategize on how to shut down glucose and glutamine. So some tumors are more glucose dependent than glutamine dependent, and some tumors appear to be more glutamine dependent than glucose dependent. But that doesn't mean they use, they're use they restricted to one fuel versus the other. It's just that their proportionality of using the two fuels can differ. So our, our viewpoint is, what's the best th therapy that will uh, eliminate those two fuels simultaneously? Uh, and, then, and then if we find out there's still some level of growth, because don't forget, as I said, there's many steps in that glutaminolysis pathway that could be targeted uh, with some drugs. And we're still learning about that. So, I mean, believe me, this is not a, a done deal. Uh, we, we've just opened the door into a, a world of new approaches for managing cancer. And in the future, we'll be able to build much better diet drug cocktails to take care of all of these outlier cells and all of these kinds of things. We're just telling you that the, the, the framework uh, by which the strategy will eventually be built on this press pulse concept uh, but the physicians, clinics, guys, these guys are going to be the ones perfecting all this stuff when they see the outcome in their treated patients. So it's like anything. You're going to learn diet, doses, timing, and scheduling for various types of people. Their body weights, sex, their age, all of these kinds of things must be brought into consideration. How many other uh, diseases do they have besides cancer? I and mean, this is another thing. We've seen patients come into the clinic. They, they have parasite infections. Their blood work looks like hell. I mean, they're all off the metabolic in a many different type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, hypertension. They have all kinds of things. All that stuff has to be brought back into a semi-normal state. And then you strategically use low doses of drugs to target and kill the tumor cells while not putting the patient at a metabolic uh, balance. So again, you really have to be the artesian of the understanding of the human body and how it works uh, and how best you can fit that patient with the, with, the, with the therapy. In the movie that's coming out, the documentary film called um, Cancer Revolution um, by Brad and Maggie Jones. Brad is a professional documentary filmmaker and his wife, Maggie, who contacted me, she had uh, uh, stage four breast cancer that metastasized to her brain uh, she went on one of these radical keto uh, changes and she her cancer disappeared and she's still doing very, very well. But they've collected a lot of these N of ones, uh, a mm. lot of these people that you just mentioned and put them in the movie 
Um, and they're all, the faces are there. And I'm a survivor, I'm a survivor. One after another, after another. And she's collecting more and more of these individuals that had stage four cancers of a broad range, lung cancer, brain cancer, colon cancer, breast cancer. And they're all alive. Yeah. Now, what is it? What is it about this? And there's no, there's no comprehensive clinical trials on this, because how would you design such a clinical trial to look at some sort of a radical change in your diet and lifestyle? Um, there's a lot of variables that have not yet been pinned down that we should need to focus on. And this is the whole thing with using ketogenic diets for man managing cancer. So glutamine is is they call it a non-essential amino acid, but for cancer, it's an absolutely essential amino acid. You can use diet and lifestyle to lower blood sugar for sure, but you need drugs uh, that will interrupt the glutamine pathway, the glutaminolysis pathway, essentially. So we use a, comb a combination of, of diet and uh, repurposed drugs uh, in the what we developed called the press pulse therapeutic strategy for managing cancer where we can we bring the body into a state of very low glucose high ketones and then we hit the surviving tumor cells with uh, drugs that target that can target and disrupt the the glutamine pathway but we do it over very we pulse it we don't do it too aggressively knowing knowing the value of glutamine for the normal physiological function of our body you can't go after glutamine uh, aggressively because you're going to harm the body. So you have to know the biology. You have to really understand biology, evolutionary biology to manage cancer. And uh, once you understand that, like you said, it's quite, it's not that complicated mm. uh, once you break down uh, the issues. So uh, um, once you understand the issues and dissect them, it, it, I mean, yeah, there's, you, you have to know about energy metabolism and you have to know about a, a variety of these things for sure. But once you know that, then the, the path to resolution, the path to long-term management without toxicity becomes obvious. Milligrams per deciliter. Um, and uh, ketones are measured in millimolar. So you have to convert the milligram per deciliter into millimolar. And what you simply do is divide that number by 18, approximately 18.03 or something. Um, then you convert your glucose. So the same units, you're dividing glucose in millimolar by ketones or beta hydroxybutyrate in millimolar. So then you can get a, a ratio uh, in, in millimolar units. So what Dorian said, the simple process of dividing your blood glucose by 18 is too complicated for 90% of the people in this country, which is a real embarrassment. But he said, we have to make it easy. So just get your blood sugar and keep, push the button, boom, on the meter, and it gives you the ratio right there. You don't have to get a paper and pen or use your brain to do the ratio calculation. Okay. So, so it just, uh, people know, oh, look at my GKI. So um, they're all excited about it, you know, and it's just a very simple ratio. And, um, you know, we're not 100% sure that that ratio will always be an accurate indicator of your present status because there can be right. some uh, really strange uh, metabolic uh, things happening in a person's body. Um, so th there's always other measures that should be looked at uh, along with the GKI. It's not mm. to be looked at alone as a simple entity. You okay. have to look at the blood work. You have to look at all the metabolites that are also in association uh, with that. And you start to see the overall physiology moved closer and closer to what we be, what we, we be considered ideal health. Mm -hmm. At the same time, the person has a tumor, and yet the body is in ideal health, uh, and, and the the tumor now is going to be absolutely. You have a chance to really rip into those cells and kill them uh, with various yeah. dosages and timing of these drugs. This is the future. This is yeah. the management of cancer if we want to stay alive. From, from this disorder. What are your top recommendations for food and lifestyle habits to lower cancer risk? You know, it's hard, as I said, get it, get your GKI down, right. uh, any food, any food that brings you into a low GKI, mm -hmm. okay? So, so you just take the meter, the keto mojo or whatever, and measure your GKI. And it's, it'll tell you right away what you can and cannot eat. It'll tell you right away the best or the worst food to eat. Because you'll know your body is telling you. And that could differ from one person to the next. Okay. So they're always saying, oh, what food? What food? I don't know. Eat a big donut and see what it does to your GKI. If it makes it go through the roof, don't eat the donut. You know, it's not that, uh, it's not that mysterious. You know, um, if you want to, you know, gnaw on a, on, a, on a big steak, 
and, and see uh, how that affects your GKI. You know, some people may respond better to a, a vegetarian uh, diet than a carnivore diet. I don't know. It's everybody's in an individual. You, but the GKI doesn't lie. Besides tracking GKI numbers, do you also recommend tracking fasting insulin numbers and insulin in general? Well, I did all those studies in the mice. Uh, people have done it in humans as well. When you don't eat food and carbohydrates, insulin naturally goes down. Uh, mm -hmm. Carbohydrates that trigger for having insulin, insulin-like growth factor and all these other things. So when you don't eat for like a week or so, you, have, you become very insulin sensitive. And that's um, Averta Health uh, with Jeff Olick and, and some of the other uh, individuals yes. there. Uh, cure type 2 diabetes, just doing water-only fasting and, and, and uh, calorie-restricted ketogenic or low-carbohydrate diets. You know, you can do it with all these diets. But, you know, it's not easy. I, I, I don't want to make it look like this is a panacea. Oh, yeah, just go out and not, don't eat carbs. Your brain is addicted to carbs. You know, yes. some people will try to not eat for three or four days. You start shaking. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, um, as I said, it's it's not easy. That's why we try to gradually move people from uh, a, a carbohydrate diet to a low carbohydrate diet and see if it your GKI will definitely go down. Whether it hits the, the zone of 2.0 or below, it's not easy. Yeah. Okay, Right, I mean, right. Look at it'll wipe that smile right off your face. I can tell you that right now. Nobody's smiling after a one week of water only fasting. <laughs> we have some of our students sometimes used to be every day, big smiles on their face. They come in, they love life. They love everything. And then when they try to fast for several days, they sit with a moping looking face. Yeah. I mean, it's not a friendly looking face. Um, uh, they're, they're so Nobody's smiling and saying, oh, how great it is. I haven't eaten anything for 25 days. Look at how great I feel. No, no. Um, it's, it's a, it should be brought in. Uh, you can dovetail it to whatever religion you happen to be, you know, give it up for the greater glory of God or something like this. Uh, whatever can be dovetailed to help you do that. But, but I think it's easier if you go on a low-carb diet for uh, several weeks, uh, get a low GKI, and then and then jump into a water only fast. Um, oh yeah, it yeah. makes it a little. You, the jump is not so dramatic than if you go 100%. cold turkey right. in this whole thing. Yes. Yep. So, uh, um, but then again, those are the those are the strategies that folks can use if they're really seriously interested in doing this for the betterment of their health. Um, we don't use any any drugs uh, except the ones that are going to kill cancer cells. So, uh, uh, and the drugs that we use, I said, are low, are we use a low doses uh, and, and that's what the uh, dosage timing and scheduling part of the press pulse concept. We, we're not there yet in perfecting uh, the strategies for what dosage timing and scheduling. You can use some of these drugs that will target glutamine. It's, e it's easier to target uh, glucose with diet and lifestyle, but glutamine is a little bit more difficult. Unless you're doing a pretty good vigorous exercise, you can lower glutamine. But I don't know if it's lowered to the point where the tumor cell would be eliminated. That's why we use a small, a little bit of do a drug to push those over the threshold and kill them. Uh, and you don't want to ever uh, use any kind of a drug that has a remote chance of harming a person. That tells you you're not doing it right. Okay. So all these terrible toxic effects, you see the poor cancer patients this is not right. This is wrong. This speaks to a profound lack of knowledge on the biology of the disease they're treating. Because you don't, you can kill cancer without having to do any of this stuff. It's just that it's not known to the majority of people or the oncology field or the National Institutes of Health. So right. uh, it's just, it's just a... The fact that blood glucose is still going to be elevated to a point, even if we're fasting, doing water fasting over a longer period of time, we're still going to maintain a relative level of blood glucose, mm. which for me yeah. triggers in my mind, it's not like you're having rice or a donut and spiking that blood glucose, but you still have that baseline level no matter what you're doing. How is that not enough to facilitate fuel for the cancer cells? Yeah. So it becomes, it's a very, it's a, it's a population dynamics issue. Okay. When, when you have a high enough level of blood sugar from eating, um, uh, carbohydrates or whatever. Uh, the brain is, is satiated. Uh, most of the other cells in your body are satiated. You already have a, a massive amount of uh, excess glucose because you're eating foods that produce glucose. So if you stop eating from foods that produce glu glucose, 
your body now has to replace the glucose with something else. And they mobilize fats and the fats go to the liver and the liver uh, produces ketone bodies. But the liver will also produce glucose through the process of gluconeogenesis. But gluconeogenesis cannot make up the need for how much glucose your brain needs. So there's going to be a shortage. So what's going to happen then is your brain is going to take what little glucose is available to do its and then replace the rest of it with ketone bodies. So this deprives the cells, the other cells in your body of, of, of glucose and other cells in the body now also increase their demand for this glucose because glucose is a good fuel for a lot of things. So you can, now the tumor cells, which absolutely must have that fuel are now competing with all other cells that also want the same fuel, but they wouldn't have competed with the tumor cells when the glucose was so high. So the tumor cells were free to do what they want to do. You lower the blood sugar. Now these cells are in direct competition with other cells in the body. And eventually they start to lose the fight. They, they need the glucose. These other guys can burn ketones and glucose. These guys can't burn the ketones. They can't burn fatty acids. So they're, they're, they're linked to two fuels. One of them is glucose. And the other is this glutamine, which is an amino acid, which is the most abundant amino acid in the body. No diet can target the availability of the glutamine. That's why you have to come in with a little bit of a drug that will push that glutamine down, thereby starving these tumor cells of the two key fuels that they need. So you need to know how to play the normal cells off the tumor cells. You need to know how to reconstruct the energy uh, uh, um, bioenergetic system in the body so that the tumor cells are now in a fight for their life, for their struggle, where the rest of the body can transition off to another fuel. This is the way, the strategy that, that, we, that we can use. So the other thing you have to realize that no one denies is that all the tumor cells have thousands of mutations. They all, everybody knows that. They have mutations because their energy is inefficient. They perform these reactive oxygen species causing mutations in the DNA. So when you have a cells, all these tumor cells full of genetic mutations, and now you're taking the whole body and putting it into, a re, uh, into an energetic restricted state, Normal cells evolved over millions of years to adapt to these restricted states. They make great efficiency at a small availability of molecules that can be uh, respired in the environment. The tumor cell has all these mutations. It traps them. It, it prevents them from making rapid adaptations because the mutations block all of the... They have no fle metabolic flexibility. So that then puts them at a massive competitive disadvantage when they're up against the normal cells that have this metabolic flexibility. So you put all that together, lack of metabolic flexibility, restriction of the two fuels that are absolutely essential for their existence. And you target this while you're transitioning over. And these tumor cells are gradually eliminated and degraded slowly. And the, and the, in, the material used from these dead tumor cells is now recycled into the normal cells of the body. The body will turn and eat the tumor cells as part of the fuel when you have under these, it's unbelievable. It's, it's when you understand the when you understand the bioenergetics of your body and what it's capable of doing, you know how these tumor cells can be blasted uh, very effectively by just using a few uh, uh, strategies that uh, is based on evolutionary biology and understanding of the biology of the tumor. We could do that on ketogenic diet, carnivore diet, vegan diet, pescatarian diet, water only fasting. All of these things can bring you down to a low GKI. Uh, and people come to realize that, oh man, I'm, I can't, it's hard for me to get, if I'm eating these plants. Well, you might want to try to eat some meat and you'll see how fast you can get down there. So again, <laughs> it depends on the person. So um, I don't want to, you know, uh, piss off ve vegans and carnivore people and they get all angry when you say one thing or another. So I don't care what you eat. See if you can get Mediterranean diets. I mean, see if you can get your GKI down and then you'll come to know your body will come to know what you can do, what you what you should and should not eat. So uh, um, again, it becomes ketogenic diet is just one way to get into the zone, but you can do it with other ways as well. But you have a quantitative measure to tell you when you're in that zone. When you're in that zone, that's when we, part of the metabolic therapy brings in the drugs uh, that will target glutamine because you can't really do that effectively with good diets. So, but you use the drugs very sparingly and you have to know to doses, timing and scheduling. You have to be very cautious because glutamine is an essential amino acid for the immune system, for the gut, for the urea cycle. Uh, so you can't go in there too aggressively. You really have to understand the biology of the problem 
uh, and know how to play groups of cells off of each other. This makes it really exciting. Cancer becomes one of those diseases that there's so beautiful many ways to kill the damn thing uh, without harming the rest of the body. This is this is the future, man. This is going to be the future. These guys are going to say, man, I can kill these tumor cells. Oh, yeah. Tell me how you did that. I'm going to show you. I tweak this at this time and you're going to annihilate these tumor cells and the patient's going to feel better when you're doing it. So uh, um, this is the future. It's just that not enough people understand the biology of the problem to 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 wield the power. Uh, of these diet drug combos to to, to uh, wipe out these cancer cells.